So, hi all, welcome to the Backfire Identity Federation series of presentations. Uh, there'll be four presentations in this series running every fortnight up until APAN 46, which is in New Zealand, where we'll be having a face-to-face -face meeting uh, at the conference uh, talking about identity federations and how uh, the Backfire project is actually going forward in getting identity federations to the Asia Pacific region. Uh, this particular one, this particular first uh, presentation is about building a proof of concept identity federation and we'll be specifically looking at um, uh, the resource or federation registry tool as a tool to capture information about your federation. Uh, don't let it worry you if it doesn't make too much sense to start with. Uh, as we progress, hopefully things will become clearer over time. Um, but we just had to start somewhere, so this is where we've chosen to start. Uh, and we're also looking at uh, using the mesh style federation, I'll talk about that shortly, uh, for this particular um, setup. Uh, the mesh federation is the simplest style of federation. There are other styles and uh, you'll see on this page there's a link to uh, descriptions of the different types of federations that you can set up. The, the mesh federation being the simplest uh, does have some issues but we'll talk about those shortly. Um, so why a mesh federation? Uh, the mesh federation are the most common and straightforward to implement. In the Mesh Federation, everything is distributed. So all of your identity providers, all of the service providers are all distributed. Uh, there's no need for a central component that has to be prote uh, protected specifically and fail over. So there's no single point of failure in a Mesh Federation. It just all can tick along without uh, various bits being there. It can still operate effectively. Uh, each organization with users in the Mesh Federation operates its own IDP that's connected to its own local identity store. So a university running an identity provider will have its own directory, maybe Active Directory or eDirectory or OpenLDAP where all the user's credentials are stored. It will use those credentials to authenticate people to service providers. These identity providers then connect to an arbitrary number of service providers which are run by potentially other organizations which provide services, content, uh, collaboration tools, access to physical tools like telescopes, um, the LIGO system, other stuff like that, uh, data sources, all sorts of stuff can be provided by service providers. And they run their own piece of software in the Federation and they then connect back to the identity providers. All of these entities, so service providers and identity providers, are typically listed in a centrally distributed SAML metadata file. We'll be looking at that in one of the later presentations in this series. Uh, all of these IDPs and service providers consume this uh, central SAML metadata file, which contains all of the information about all of the entities in the Federation. Uh, therefore, the metadata file basically describes who's in the Federation and it therefore provides the trust in the Federation. Uh, the types of Federation that are used globally around the, around the world globally, uh, broken up into various types. Um, uh, we're seeing an increased take up of the hybrid approach, but uh, predominantly uh, most Federations from the Mesh Federation because it's easiest to set up. Uh, next after that's the hub and spoke, which has more complexity and it does have a piece that sits right in the middle of the Federation, it's the hub, uh, which is where all of the information about users and stuff flows through. So it does have some highly available sensitivity to it. It needs to have a piece in the middle that needs to be always available. Um, as you can see back in 2015, 73% of federations were just using a standard mesh federation. Uh, in 2016, that number's decreased and there's been a move towards the hybrid approach where federations are running both a hub and spoke, part of their federation is hub and spoke, and the rest of it is still the traditional hub, sorry, it's traditional mesh style federation. 
And I see this sort of trend continuing. Uh, we haven't seen the 26, 2017 figures yet from uh, refeds, uh, but I expect there to be even more um, uh, hybrid federations will have appeared over time. Uh, with the mesh federation, there are some challenges with uh, putting up a mesh federation. Um, uh, for the mesh federation, though, most of these uh, challenges are relatively small and have generally been solved many times over by many other federations. Uh, there's a effective management of the metadata files. Uh, federations have built uh, federation registries to manage this metadata file in an effective and efficient way. Handling of attribute release to identity providers. Again, the federation registry tool can aid in providing uh, abilities for identity providers to release the correct set of attributes to the services that require them. Uh, optionally, running a central identity provider uh, discovery service or a WAIF or a where are you from service. So there's a number of federations that provide software that will allow us to run a centralized discovery service. And we'll be looking at uh, one of the, uh, two of those in a future presentation. And finally, signing and distributing the metadata, federation metadata. Um, there's tools around that make that process a whole lot simpler. And there's work that's currently going on at the moment within some of the larger federations about how to even, to make that even, uh, an even more efficient process. Um, we'll discuss that uh, later in this uh, presentation. So some federations use web-based services to register and create all the entries. Others rely on a composite of SAML2 metadata for their, for their federation, uh, for their metadata of their federation. Uh, so they either use a tool or they use some sort of scripting mechanism to build their federation metadata. Uh, this presentation will be looking at the JAGA federation registry tool to assist with managing the challenges of uh, that metadata and handling of attribute release. So the, the JAGA tool does manages the federation metadata and can provide appropriate attribute release uh, uh, files that can be used by identity providers to ensure that the attributes are being released correctly. For discovery, we'll look at the switch waif tool and we'll also have a look at disco juice. They're two tools that uh, are fairly easy to deploy and provide a centralized discovery mechanism. The discovery mechanism is the tool that uh, users visit to help them or to allow them to select which identity provider they're coming from. Uh, for metadata signing, we'll use an old tool, the XML SEC tool uh, from the Shibboleth site uh, for signing of our metadata. And we'll be looking at it at a later time in the, this a series of presentations. Uh, there are some federation, uh, mesh federation challenges that have not effectively been uh, resolved. Um, and they are difficult to resolve because of the architecture of the mesh federation. Uh, technical changes to entities takes time to propagate out to all of the federation entities. So if I change some aspect of my identity provider, it will take a number of hours for that information to propagate out through the metadata to be consumed by all of the identity providers and service providers in the federation. And that can cause an outage for that identity provider if that change is fairly significant. And that outage will last as long as it takes for that metadata to flow out to the various service providers that need it to work. Uh, we've had some challenges within the AAF uh, over the past year or so as we've been working with our identity providers to upgrade them from version 2 to version 3. And some of them have done things like change the domain names of their organisation. Uh, that has required a change to flow out to the service providers and it takes time for that change to happen. If that change fails, it also takes time for the change to be rolled back. Can you not hear me? I shall stop sharing my... Uh, stop the video. 
Is that better? Can you hear? Can you hear? Yeah. Is that better, folks? Okay. Yeah. So where did you lose me? Should I back up a bit or just keep going? Okay, I'll just keep going from here. So there's the technical challenges of uh, propagating your Federation metadata out to all of the service providers and it takes some time. Uh, another issue with the mesh style federations is the size of the metadata file. And as your federation grows, it will continue to add size to its metadata as more and more entities are added. Um, and when you start consuming the edge again metadata, it has thousands of entities in it and it will take some time to, for your identity providers and service providers to process those files. And it's usually a memory issue that uh, identity providers and service providers run into when the metadata file becomes larger and larger. Um, the other issues that we've run into is the ability to record the utilization of your federation with this distributed model. Uh, all of the logs that are of importance are held by the IDPs and the service providers. And you need to get them back to a centralized point to process them to be able to provide useful. Uh, utilization logs or ut utilization reports of your federation. Uh, these utilization reports are very important, particularly for folk who are funding the federation. They want to see how well the federation is being used, if it's being effectively used. Uh, a lot of these issues are resolved with the hub and spoke model, and there seems, but there seems to be a gradual move towards a hybrid federation. So, hub and spoke people are moving some of their stuff to hub to mesh. So they're gonna run into the same issues about uh, propagation of metadata, size of metadata and utilization. But they do solve some of those issues by having that centralized hub where everything goes through. So the program for the next eight weeks, um, today we're looking at the Federation Registry, JAGA. In a fortnight's time, I'll be back talking about identity providers. Uh, two weeks after that, we'll look at service providers and adding them to your federation. Uh, beyond that, we'll have a look at discovery and uh, metadata. So this is really a technical series on setting up the technical side of your federation. At APAN 46 in New Zealand, uh, on the Monday and the Tuesday, we'll be looking more at the policy side of setting up your federation. So having all your tools there, we wrap those tools up in some policy, some rules uh, to run your federation. And at that point, you can start to think about making your, your federation a production federation and start to think about joining it to edge again. So the tool itself, uh, Jagger, it's a free federation management tool. It's uh, actually called the Resource Registry version three. It's been developed by the HEA Net, which is the uh, Irish Federation. And they developed it to manage the Edugate uh, multi-party SAML federation. Other organizations use Jagger to manage their federations, but it can be used to manage the web of trust for a single identity entity. It can also be used as a GUI for your shibboleth SAML identity for providers. Uh, for our use case, we'll just be using Jagger to manage the federation metadata for a single federation. So your new hybrid, uh, sorry, your new mesh federation that we'll be deploying uh, or that you can deploy using this tool. Uh, for our deployment, uh, we've chosen to deploy it onto a single CentOS OS 7 server. And the sort of specifications you'd be looking at is a single CPU, about four gig of memory and about 30 gig of disk space. And you'd need to open up some ports to allow access to this thing. Uh, port 80, port 443, so your HTTP and HTTPS. Uh, with the configuration we have, everything gets transformed in to port 443. So if you start at port 80, you'll end up on 443. And port 22 for a secure shell if you want to manage the box, but uh, that's, uh, you don't really need to open that up to the internet. 
Uh, installing Jagger, so I've written a guide um, and we've had to modify it a, a little bit in the past few days because we found some issues with it. Uh, there is a link and I think I've sent that link out previously in an email to everybody. Uh, and it's actually a Google document and I'd be happy if you left comments on it or left any notes or any issues you find if you left any notes for others uh, to um, help them if they choose to use this guide to set up their own version of Jagger. Uh, the guide itself is closely based on the Jagger install process final version which is available from the uh, HEA net uh, Jagger site um, and we made some specific changes for a CentOS 7 install. If you're not happy using CentOS it doesn't matter you can use something else but you'll have to sort of fall back to the uh, the initial Jagger install process guide that's provided by the software vendors themselves. Uh, when you've finished your installation and it's running it should look something like the little screenshot that I've got at the bottom. It's a fairly bland sort of screen. It's basically got a, a little login button to the uh, to the right where you can log in. Uh, as part of the setup, you create your initial account, your first account in the setup phase, and you can use that account to then create further accounts within the system. Uh, the Jagger system itself can also be federated. It can be a federated service within your federation. So once you've gone down a few steps and got your federation running. People who have a federated identity can log in using the Jagger, uh, using their identity provider to log into Jagger to manage their identity provider or service provider. Uh, it's fairly simple to install. Um, it's all based on PHP. Uh, using the guide, it should take about an hour or less to get it set up and running. But you may run into some specific issues on your infrastructure or your operating system. Uh, so it might take a little longer. Uh, we had an issue the past few days with uh, SE Linux causing some grief. Uh, if you have it set to the enforcing mode. Um, the simplest mode, the uh, way to resolve that is to back it off to the uh, permissive mode. Um, there are some instructions in the guide for helping you get enforcing work, but they're not complete. If somebody wants to take on the challenge of getting it to work in enforcing mode, then that's a, that would be great for that to be added to the to guide. Uh, I've also set up an example Jagger Federation registry, and it's available for you to experiment with. Uh, the URL's there, it's at rr.aftest.xyz. Uh, just feel free to add whatever you want. You can create new users for your own use. It'll be available up until and the short time after the APN46 conference. And it's there for you to experiment with if you don't want to set up your own. So uh, go for it and uh, have a good play with it. See if it meets your needs for setting up your federation. Uh, there are some alternatives to the Jagger tool. Um, but none of them seem to be as open or freely available as Jagger itself. Uh, the AF, which is where I'm from and where Dali is from, we have our, our federation registry tool. And there are a number of federations that have deployed this. So we've got New Zealand, Singapore, and Hong Kong, I think, uh, the four, including us. We've used the AF federation registry tool. Uh, it's getting a bit old and clunky and we are considering rebuilding it from the scratch uh, from the ground up and we're not sure if it's going to be made available as an open source tool into the future uh, we're looking at using a lot of AWS uh, magic to um, deploy our new version of our federation registry uh, and that may limit the ability for us to make it open source uh, JISC, the UK Federation, have a Federation as a Service tool that they're developing. Uh, I'm not sure if it's ready for production release yet. I think it's getting fairly close if it's not. And I know there's a few federations looking at using that tool. Uh, if you use that tool, then you don't have to actually deploy any software. JISC will do all the software deployment and management of the software for you. All you need to do is populate it with your uh, entities, your identity providers and your service providers. 
Uh, the next is the Switch AAI Resource Registry. It's the, the root of a lot of other tools. It's the basis of where the AAI Federation Registry came from. And I also think it underpins a whole lot of work that's happened with Jagger. So. Uh, Switch used to be used to make their registration tool available on request, but uh, no longer do so. Um, they recommend using Jagger or our tool, but we don't recommend using our tool anymore. So Jagger sort of seems to be the the, the place to go. Uh, the next one's a thing called Open Connects, and that's from Surfnet. Uh, Open Connects is a tool for deploying a hub and spoke federation. So if you're interested in looking at the hub and spoke options, we may have a look at this tool after APAN 46, uh, if there's interest, and see how difficult or easy it is to install and manage uh, a hub and spoke federation. Uh, there are many other tools uh, out there run by different federations. Uh, some are open source, some are closed. Uh, if you're interested in having a look Go and ask the friendly operators of those federations what tools they use and see if they're willing to share them with you if you're interested in their tooling. There's also the do it by hand option where you have all of your metadata in some repository somewhere and you hand manage it or use a bunch of scripts to assist in managing and building your federation metadata. Uh, some federations were using this particular approach previously. I think some still are using this approach. It doesn't really scale that well. And there is a bit of a risk involved in doing it all by hand, uh, particularly with um, uh, getting errors or bugs or typos sort of appearing in your federation metadata. So I would recommend using some sort of tool that's been built by somebody to manage your federation metadata or using the software as a service federation services provided by JISC or other federations that are also offering similar uh, federation as a service as a tool. So why are we looking at Jagger? Jagger is simple to install as I've spoken about. It's free, it's open source, it's um, supported by a federation. And there's also a fairly strong user community. Uh, it's uh, in fairly strong use around other federations. I believe South Africa, uh, sorry, South America and South Africa have uh, picked it up and used it fairly widely. It works fairly nicely with Edugain. You can consume all the Edugain metadata and make that a part of your federation fairly easily. Uh, it can be a federated application in itself. So it's, you can, uh, don't have to rely on a username, a secondary username and password to log into it. You can use your own federated authentication to log into their tool. And it has many useful features that uh, ease the management of your identity federation, not just the SAML metadata side of things, but we'll look at some of the other uh, pieces that uh, uh, make uh, using this tool uh, useful. Um, I'm going to now sort of step into having a look at uh, using Jagger for just creating something fairly quickly. Uh, it breaks the federation management into uh, three distinct parts. There's federations, there's identity providers, and there's service providers. Uh, a federation is basically a group of identity providers and federation uh, service providers uh, glued together to form a a circle of trust and the Jagger tool can have multiple federations pulling together multiple identity providers and service providers into different circles of trust. For our example, we're just having one circle of trust, which is your national federation uh, being managed by this tool and all the identity providers and service providers will join that particular federation in our example. Uh, the Jagger tools basically about creating your federation metadata and creating curating the identity providers and service providers. Jagger allows you to maintain these multiple federations, but as I said, now we'll just look at a single test federation. So your first step is to register a federation, and across after you've logged in, you'll have a, a menu bar. You'll have federations, identity providers, service providers, and the register option. If you want to register anything, you click on the register. 
it'll pull down a drop down list and you can select what you want to register. Uh, I've selected the federations option and entered the data it's uh, asked for. So it's just asked for a couple of names, a URL, which is the, oops, sorry, back it up, a URL or a entity, I'd, uh, sorry, a federation uh, name and some uh, a description and a bit about the terms of use. Uh, at APAN 46, we'll talk more about the terms of use for your federation, which you can then populate into this. It's really about what are the rules for participating in this federation. For this, this particular federation I've set up, there are no rules. It's uh, anybody can play. You can just come and add whatever you like to that particular federation. Uh, this federation's actually been set up in my test uh, federation that I talked about earlier. Once you click on the register button, it then takes, uh, it uh, then sends a request off to the federation operator to have the um, federation approved. So it starts a workflow. Uh, and it will send the federation operator an email and the, uh, when the federation operator logs in, they'll get a little tag at the top right hand corner, which says that they've got one activity to um, action. And they click on that little tag in the top right hand corner and it will pull down a list of uh, workflows that need to be approved. Once that uh, approval has occurred, no, actually no, before that they, they click on the, uh, the thing to be approved and it provides them a detailed list of what's actually been registered and what's been asked to be approved. Federation operator reviews this request and approval is based on the Federation policies. So that's where you need your policies to decide, is this Federation going to be part of your tooling? Is it when an identity provider is added? Is this identity provider representing identities that uh, are valid within your Federation? Does the service that you're registering make sense within your Federation? Your federation rules will help you make those decisions. Once it's been registered, you'll have your new federation and it'll be listed under the federations tab. So I've got the APAN federation listed there. And that was the one that I had registered and it now appears. The uh, level of access that you get to see with this particular tool will, uh, that you have will determine what uh, access you can see or what parts of the federation you can see. Uh, for an admin, they can see everything. There are different levels of uh, uh, access from guests, which can't see much, to a member who can see uh, information and read information about the various pits in the federation, but they can't actually manage or, main or change stuff. And there's another level which is allowing people to uh, maintain and change information about the various entities. Uh, when you start interacting with your federation and with the other components, you'll see that there are many details associated with um, each component within the, uh, so with the federation, uh, associated with the federation that can be managed by Jagger. And you'll see on the second line, uh, a raft of new options that have appeared. Uh, and we'll talk through those. So you've got uh, uh, in your under your navigation for your federation, you've got a general tab, which allows you to change or view and change general information about your federation. And it also allows you to generate contact lists for all your IDPs or for your SPs. Um, we in the AF have found these contact lists to be very important to us because we like to send out information about what's occurring in the federation on a fairly regular basis. We have newsletters that go out, we have uh, security alerts that go out to our IDPs and our service provider contacts. Uh, we also have um, the ability to send emails out to subgroups of uh, contacts. Um, Jagger doesn't allow for that to happen. Jagger just sends everything. It just provides a contact list for everybody who's a contact for the IDP. So that's a bit of a limitation with this particular tool. We'll come to that a bit later. The next tab across is about membership. 
uh, membership for a federation is just all of the entities that are registered in the federation. It includes all the identity providers and service providers that have been registered into the federation. And there are buttons there to allow you to add a new identity provider or you can invite an identity provider or a service provider to join your federation and it also allows you to remove, remove entities from your federation. The next tab along is about the metadata and it provides a number of versions of the metadata for the federation. It provides a IDP specific version. So the IDP specific version only holds all of the service providers that the identity provider may be interested in. Uh, there's also a version for service providers, which only provides information about the identity providers. It's pretty pointless providing service providers with information about other service providers in the metadata because they can't use that information. Uh, those two versions of the metadata are unsigned. There is an option to have the metadata signed. But we talked about signing of the metadata at a, a later workshop. Uh, the signing of the metadata actually provides the technical trust in the Federation. It's because the Federation operator holds the key that is used to sign the Federation metadata and distributes the public half of that key, which can then be used to verify that the signature was made by the operator of the Federation, is where the trust comes from. Uh, and all that signing and passing of keys around will be discussed later in that uh, fourth webinar that we're doing. The next uh, tab across is about the attributes. So each federation can define a set of attributes that are of importance to identity providers and uh, service providers within the federation. And that list will be the set of attributes that uh, will be the limit of the attributes available to the identity providers and service providers. Uh, there's a thing called validators. Um, and that allows you to define processes that can be used to validate entities within the Federation. Uh, it's a fairly advanced topic and I still need to understand better how this actually works within the tool, but it seems like it can uh, do some validation on an identity provider to make sure it meets certain criteria before it's allowed to join. So I'm assuming that it allows you to implement some of your Federation rules at a technical level within this Federation tool, which is a fairly nice uh, uh, a nice part of the tool, a nice um, function of the tool. The final tab is about management of the actual Federation. It allows you to enable or disable the Federation within the tool, and it can also allow you to request that the Federation be removed if it's no longer of any use. It's probably something you wouldn't want to do with your uh, national federation. So once you have your federation, it's uh, time to start collecting up your entities. So what's an entity? An entity is either an identity provider or it's an attribute authority, which is just a sort of identity provider without a username login page. It just provides attributes about a user. So provides a query mechanism that uh, can be used to get these attributes. And then the service providers. Your federation needs to collect these together and pool them up to uh, build your circle of trust for that particular set of entities. The term entity is really just a word that's come from the SAML specification. and uh, It just defines the information that's stored or recorded about each of those uh, particular pieces of uh, infrastructure. It's all the endpoints, the certificates, the contact details, all that sort of stuff goes up to make an entity within your federation. Uh, the entities are then grouped into federations and then they form their circles of trust. Uh, the collected entities metadata will be published into the federation metadata, which is then consumed by all of the entities in the federation. And we'll be looking at uh, that part of the puzzle, how the IDPs and the service providers will gather up and use the Federation metadata to work with each other. Uh, you can register identity providers and service providers in the JAGA tool in a very similar manner that uh, you register a Federation. You just use the register button. Uh, each 
entity will need approval by the Federation operator. So again, you apply the rules to the Federation rules to the identity provider or service provider as they join. Uh, entities generally require much more technical information than uh, when you register a Federation. Uh, all the endpoints, certificates, all that sort of stuff are required when you register your uh, identity providers and service providers. And you can, at the time of registration, register your identity provider into a federation, or you can choose to have that, do that step later if you've got multiple federations within your uh, Jagger tool. Uh, Jagger has a very consistent user interface, making the whole system simple to navigate and use. Uh, plus there's numerous information pop-up buttons with uh, helpful tips about what's actually expected in each of the boxes. It's not complete though. There are some boxes that are a bit mysterious um, and some experimentation. You should be able to work out what needs to go into there. If you can't work it out, there's always the, um, the various uh, groups, email groups that you can ask those questions about what does it actually mean when it says it wants a such and such. Uh, let's have a quick look at entities in a bit more detail. Um, entities are, have names, the entity IDs. And you'll probably hear this term talked a lot about when you're talking about federations, about the entity ID of a, an IDP or a service provider. And the entity ID is a globally unique name for a SAML entity. It's either an identity provider or a service provider. Uh, an identity is a uh, it's just a name, it's not a location. Even though it may look like a URL, it's not always that way. It does not need to resolve to anything. Uh, for shibboleth identity providers and service providers, the entity ID, if it's a URL, generally resolves to a page which provides the metadata for the entity. But that, again, doesn't need to be the case. It doesn't need to resolve at all. And the uh, domains that are used in your entity ID don't need to match the domains that are used in the endpoints of your IDP or service provider. Again, we'll talk about that later when we talk about identity providers and service providers. Uh, when you start naming things or your organizations, or your subscribers start naming their entity IDs, their entities, they need to be careful about what entity IDs they select for their um, their particular components, their IDPs and service providers. Uh, and the In Common Federation, which is the federation out of the United States, has a very good guide on entity ID naming, which is referenced later in this document. Uh, what policies that you define or adopt for your entity ID naming uh, will need to always be able to cope with exceptions. Uh, particularly with service providers. Service providers tend not to read the rules properly and come up with all sorts of weird and wonderful names for their entities. They just need to be aware that even if you do have rules, there'll be someone out there who will break them. Uh, so as I've said, federations uh, about, are about collecting entities, IDPs, service providers. Uh, Jagger takes your collected entities and does stuff with them. It does SAML related stuff, so it verifies and validates that their metadata is good. It checks off certificates, make sure that they are good and meets the requirements of your federation. And it also provides reports on and issues that uh, relate to identity providers and service providers. So if something is not resolving, it will tell you about that. If there's a problem with a certificate, it will report on that. Uh, Jagger will also group your entities into federations, so group them into collections effectively. It produces metadata to share between IDPs and service providers. It allows you to sign the metadata and generate attribute filter rules for IDPs to apply so they can release the appropriate attributes to service providers. It makes metadata ready for consumption by entities in the federation. Now, this is a, an important thing to, to make your subscribers aware of that you're taking or doing a lot of the work that they would have done previously in integrating with service providers and 
doing it once and repeatedly uh, making it available to many organizations in one go. The new service provider comes along and wants to join up with all of your universities. They can go and visit them individually and say we need to connect to your LDAP and do lots of tough integration work. Or they can come to your central federation and say we want to join your federation because we know your federation will then have us automatically join to all of your uh, institutions that are running identity providers. So having these tools will make that, uh, that whole process a whole lot easier for everybody. Uh, Jagger also does more than just SAML stuff. Uh, it does some non-SAML related stuff. It provides a simple client registration management tool. Uh, a simple, yeah, simple CRM effectively. Um, it allows you to generate email lists for all of the contacts. Uh, both uh, service providers and identity providers. There are simple lists though. It does not provide categories for technical contacts or security contacts. Uh, it only provides a list for all contacts. And that's probably a, an improvement to the tool which could be uh, fairly easily built in. It provides a simple workflow approval system which then allows you to wrap that up in your, as part of your federation rules and also allows you to define circles of trust, basically different groups of entities that work together. Uh, there are some really significant benefits of running a federation registry. Uh, the main one is about maintaining order and Jagger does a lot of this management stuff for you. Provides the access control, ensuring the right people have the right access to stuff. It has an approval process. It reduces the amount of errors that occur. There should be no errors if uh, things are entered correctly. It also allows you to delegate uh, the management of entities out to the owners of those entities. So you're not having to manage all of that uh, data entry yourself. Uh, the, the owners of the entities can do that themselves. It allows you to technically implement some of your federation rules. So that, that validation stuff, which I think needs more investigation, will allow you to implement some of your federation rules at a technical level. Uh, there are some things Jagger won't do. Um, even though it does a lot of very good things, there are some things that uh, it's uh, not capable of doing yet. Um, it doesn't allow you to provide any sort of service catalog or identity provider catalog for your subscribers to go and say, well, what services do you provide? There's no mechanism to extract a pretty catalog of services. It's something that you need to consider how you do that if you want to make uh, which services are available to your users available from the Federation. It also doesn't allow you to provide a list of identity providers easily in a nice uh, friendly format. Uh, but I think and we believe that a service catalog, both an identity catalog, identity provider catalog and a service provider catalog is of value. Uh, and it's something you want to share if to grow your federation because identity providers attract service providers. So if you can say, hey, service providers, we have all of the universities within our, unit, within our nation as part of our federation. You want to connect to those, talk to us, and we'll make it easy for you. And service providers attract identity providers. Identity providers are looking for that service or the service that will make their life easier. Um, when you first get started with building your federation, you'll run into the chicken and the egg problem. Do you chase identity providers first, but have no service providers to provide them? Or do you chase service providers, and, uh, but have no identities that will use those services? Uh, some federations look for the killer app to help them kickstart their federation. But if you do find such an application, please let us know about it, because everyone wants this killer app. We still haven't found one that sort of is a real good kickstart for any federation. Others offer incentives from mini grant schemes to potential service providers, basically throw money at service providers to get them to join the federation, uh, which then attracts identity providers to say, these are useful services, we'll start participating in your federation. Uh, some of the other stuff that uh, Federation, the Jagger tool doesn't do. Um, it doesn't allow for unauthenticated registration of entities. 
So to have an entity added to your federation through JAGA, the person adding that uh, entity needs to be able to log into the federation tool, the JAGA tool. Um, I think that can be a bit of a problem because, again, it's a bit of a chicken and egg. You need an account to log in, but you can't log in because you haven't got an account, so you need to go and get an account from somewhere. Uh, and that puts a bit of a load back onto the Federation operator of actually managing these accounts. If you make the tool Federation aware, you still have this problem because there's no way to sort of bootstrap an IDP into the Federation registry without having somebody actually log into the tool. The next thing it doesn't do is have a concept of organisation or legal entity that actually owns the entities within the Federation. There's no overarching organizational layer that says this organization is responsible for this IDP and several services. Uh, if it did have an organizational layer, that organizational layer would be have somebody responsible for signing any subscription forms that you make people sign to join your federation. Uh, it uh, allows you to add additional information it could potentially add, allow you to add additional information about who's to bill if you choose to bill people or invoice people for participating in the Federation. This is something that the AAF does. I don't know that there's too many other federations that actually charge their subscribers to participate. Um, the other thing that's missing is the ability for organisations to participate in the workflow approval process. So as a, if a new service provider comes in from some researcher, uh, the organisation, I think, should have a say in if that service should be added to the Federation. It's not really up to the uh, researcher to just randomly throw stuff at the Federation. I think it needs that second layer of uh, approval. Uh, but these are some things that will need to be considered as you sort of build your federations. Um, and JAGA just uh, doesn't have the capability to capture these additional relationships, which is a bit of a shame, but um, it may come in the future. So just a bit about uh, operating your federation registry tool. Uh, this is more about the day-to-day -day maintenance and running of it. Uh, standard operating procedures, if you like. So, uh, when you, if you choose to run this particular tool, you'll need to wrap some good operating procedures around its operation. Uh, this is fairly standard stuff: uh, regular backups, patching, run, vulnerability scanning. It needs to be publicly available. Federated login is a good idea for it. And running as a single service instance is fine. So we just go through each of those. Um, so good operating and security practices. So with any software that you run, you should be doing this sort of stuff. It should go without saying. Um, it's a, uh, and there's probably activities that you're currently undertaking as an NREN. Uh, so regular backups, in particular the database. If you lose your database, then all of your collection, so federations and identities will disappear. Snapshot your server regularly, some offsite storage just in case. Regularly patch and maintain your thing. Uh, have a, a solid patching regime. Run a separate test environment to patch on first and repeat on in production. Uh, if you've got a change management board, get them involved. Make sure that they're aware that changes are occurring to your infrastructure uh, so that if something does go wrong, they can sort of know. Uh, well, they can approve it and uh, understand the risks involved in doing any maintenance work. Uh, notifications to your subscriber, even if it seems very low risk, we've run some changes in the AF that we thought were fairly low risk that have caused issues for some of our identity providers. Uh, so we, we inform of pretty much every change, particularly changes that affect the how we distribute or manage our metadata, because that's the stuff that uh, identity providers and service providers will use. Uh, and ensure that your support team, if you have some, have a support team are aware of any changes, so that if uh, it does go bad, then the support team's aware of it and uh, are all over it. Uh, regular scanning for vulnerabilities and compromises is a, 
useful thing. And join the community and be aware of any issues or updates to the software. Uh, I've also got a point to have a, a review of your national information security manuals if you have such things within your nation and use them as a guide or a starting point uh, for your operating practices if you're not already doing so. Uh, the, the JAGA registry or your JAGA registry if you choose to use one should be publicly accessible. Uh, it allows you then to delegate management of entities to their owners, it shares the workload with your subscribers, gets everyone with some skin in the game, and it reduces the risk as a federation operator because they've actually got some skin in the game. It's uh, their responsibility to make sure their entities are correctly registered. Uh, but you need to ensure that your levels of access are appropriate for the user's access. So. Anything above read should be provided based on the principle, minimal, minimal principle, uh, the principles of minimal privilege under the information and resources that are necessary, necessary for its legitimate purpose. So you wouldn't give just a, <coughs> an IDP operator or manager uh, access to everything. You just let them manage their own IDP information. Uh, federated login. Uh, this is an optional thing. But, uh, I think it's useful to allow people in your federation to be able to log into the tool, even just as a guest, so they can see, have at least some view of what services and what identity providers are in your federation. Um, uh, it's an example of, it's also an example of you're actually using the federation for what it's meant for, reducing the number of usernames and passwords people have to deal with. Having a federation and then not using it for that just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, it also allows their IDPs to prove that they're working correctly. So one of the first things their IDPs would want to do would be able to test that they can log into the federation registry tool. Uh, it provides easy access for your subscribers, uh, reduces admin activities for your federation operators. So you're not continually adding, creating and deleting accounts for manage, or for the uh, Federation registry tool, nor are you dealing with password changes on an ongoing basis. Uh, the tool does not provide an anonymous registration option, so you'll need a user account required when a, to register an entity, at least an identity provider to start with. Uh, at least one local account is needed to create each entity or each identity provider in your federation. Uh, running as a single instance, I think that's fine. It, the particular tool doesn't need to be highly available. It's just a collection mechanism. It publishes your metadata. It's the metadata that needs to be available. Uh, and when we come to talking about metadata, we'll look at ways of making it always available. It, not might, it might not be up to date all the time. If you're doing some maintenance and you take your Federation registry offline for a couple of hours, as long as the metadata is available somewhere else, then that should be uh, generally suffice. Uh, generally, also the Federation registry tool can go offline for a period of up to a week because your Federation metadata will generally have a timeout or a expiration time that's about a week long. I wouldn't recommend having it offline for that long, but uh, it can be that way and your IDPs and SPs will continue to run without issue. Uh, for up to that time. Once the metadata expires, then you're in trouble. Uh, the only thing is that without the Federation Registry available, new entities and changes to existing entities won't be possible. So you should try and limit the time of system outages, make subscribers aware of your maintenance activities, and test your maintenance activities in a test environment first. So that's pretty much the Federation Registry tool. Um, uh, sort of gone through that fairly quickly. I'll be making these slides available. Uh, we've got the documentation there to set up your own tool. We've got the tests, example, Federation Registry uh, available for you to play with. So it's up to you to sort of have a, have a go at it, see if it's gonna meet your requirements. And uh, um, yeah, we'll take it from there. Uh, the next, yeah, the next things that you need to do is have a look at the tool. Um, 
start collecting entities to populate into it. Uh, so to be effective as a federation, you'll need some identity providers and some service providers. Uh, when we started the AF, it's nearly 10 years ago, 10 years next year, we started with a small group of willing uh, universities uh, who've shown interest in getting involved in the federation. We also picked uh, federation, uh, so organisations that uh, had the appropriate infrastructure that we could plug into. Uh, so those institutions that already have Edgero running are probably good candidates because they probably have an identity store or directory that sits under Edgero, uh, which then makes it easy for you to plug your identity provider into. Think about running an identity provider for your NREN so that your local folks can, uh, at your NREN can actually log in and start experimenting with this stuff, start spreading the word about uh, what it's all about. And you also need to think about how to provide access to researchers who are in organisations that are not, not part of your federation. So as your federation begins to grow, there'll be researchers in organisation X that uh, haven't joined the federation yet. So how do you cater for those guys? And I'll leave that as an open question for the moment. Uh, the next webinar will be on the on identity providers in two weeks' time on the 19th of June, and I'll probably send around some information prior to that about uh, uh, identity providers and uh, how to start setting one up. So, if we have any questions, Ms. Dahlia? Nothing coming for me. No? Is everyone still awake? <laughs> So I think that the, the the best thing to do is just give it a go, see what it uh, see what it's all about, uh, and uh, start um, experimenting with uh, building a federation. Somebody asked, can I create my own IDP for testing purpose? Uh, yep, yeah, you can create your own IDP. You can stick it into a little test federation. Um, before the next webinar, I'll probably send around some uh, guides that are available from other federations on how to set up an IDP. Um, uh, and we'll also be looking at two options for IDPs. We're looking at Shibboleth and Simple SAML PHP. There's uh, two different options for setting up a, an identity provider. Uh, okay, where do we get an, uh, the, an SP then? Um, the service providers are the fortnight after that. Uh, the service provider I'll be sending around just a very simple attribute reflector type attribute, uh, attribute reflector service, um, which you can set up. It's just a simple PHP script. Uh, but there's a whole lot of service providers that are available in Edge again. And we'll be looking at Edge again after APAN 46 about how to get all of the services that are available in Edge again, and there's uh, hundreds of them there, uh, to actually plug into your federation. So if you start with IDPs and then plug into Edge again, then IDPs will have a good raft of services that they can start, uh, start using. Uh, next. There's another question, do you manage? Last one. Uh, do you manage the Jagger also SPIDPs? Yes, uh, Jagger can also consume metadata that's generated by a simple SAML PHP. Um, I'll be looking at setting up a simple SAML PHP identity provider and service provider in the next couple of uh, webinars and plugging them into Jagger so to be able to manage those and how to use simple SAML PHP to consume the federation metadata from Jagger. Any test SPs you can recommend? Um, if you're interested in doing uh, just a simple WordPress, if you go to the WordPress site and do a search for shibboleth, there's a, you can set up a WordPress with um, 
shibboleth at the back end uh, as a service provider. So you can use that to test. Uh, as I said, I'll be providing a simple attribute reflector tool at the uh, service provider webinar in about uh, four weeks' time. Um, but if you want to go earlier, I can provide you that directly, Mohammed. Yes. Is it okay to install JAG on a VM with a... Uh, yeah, it should work. It's, uh, it's a fairly lightweight piece of software. So the question is, is it okay to install JAG on a VM with the given resources? Well, the JAG I've set up is actually on a VM. It's running in Tasmania, which is down in the south, south end of Australia. Uh, it's just a simple uh, VM running in Cloud Store, not Cloud Store, in uh, Nectar. OpenStack, she's just this OpenStack VM. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, if you have any questions after the presentation, feel free to just email them to myself or Dahlia. Um, I'll provide you, you've got my email address, I'm sure, or you can also email them to the uh, task force list if you want to share the questions with everybody, and we can actually use the task force uh, email list to um, uh, start conversations around this uh, this particular tool and identity providers and service providers. So, uh, I've provided a bunch of references. I'll be emailing this presentation out after the webinar. And so, done that one. In a fortnight's time, we'll be talking about identity providers. Then we've got service providers, discovery, then APM. And that's it. Uh, stop sharing. So thanks for attending, guys. Um, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time when we start talking about identity providers. And I'm going to stop recording now, hopefully. <laughs>